In the last video, we learned how to find partial molar properties for mixing properties and derived the equation shown here. These are for general partial molar properties, which is why we are using the B. And we have an equation whether we're trying to find it for component 1 or component 2 in a two-component system. Also, we defined the change in the partial molar property as being the partial molar B of component 2 when it's in solution as compared to the partial molar B when it's pure. And we can rewrite this term just without the bar because when the solution is pure, the partial molar property is the same as that property. So let's see how we actually can put this equation to use for us. So I've essentially rewritten the equation from the previous slide, but substituted in G instead of B. So now we're interested in particular in the Gibbs free energy. So let's see how this works if we look at a plot of delta G of mixing. So we're going to go term by term here. So we, in the end, want to know where can we find this change in the partial molar property based on, on the right side, only the G of mixing for the system. So let's consider this first term, delta G of mixing, and see where it shows up on this plot. We are going to pick a value of x, and let's just say that x equals 0.6 so that we can execute this um, equation. So at 0.6, this is the value of delta G of mixing, and so we could read it off of the plot over here, and I'm going to call this point B, and I'm going to call this point up here A, and so the line segment AB gives us the value of delta G mixing. Okay, now our second term is this 1 minus XAU, and our X uh, coordinate here is XAU, and so 1 minus that is this segment right here. So I'm going to call this point P, and so this green line PB gives us the value of 1 minus XAU. So now we just have this last term, D delta G of mixing DX. So that's really just the slope of the delta G mixing curve at this value. And so we find the slope by drawing the tangent to the curve there. And so I'm going to call this C. And so that slope is the change in Y, CB, divided by the change in X, which is PB. So we can actually figure this out now just by using these line segments. So we have AB plus PB times CB over P, B, so these cancel, AB plus CB, that's going to give us just AC. Okay, so what? So what this tells us is that this value that we're interested in, delta G bar of AU, is given by this line segment AC, which really just means that we can find the value of delta G bar at any given value of X by drawing the tangent to the curve there and reading off the value of the intercept. This is getting a little bit messy, so let's take a look at this. Okay, so here's our same delta G of mixing curve, and now I've picked a different value of X, XAU equals 0.4, and so we can just read off the value. We draw the tangent to the curve at this value, and we read it off right over here. So at x AU equals 0.4 delta G bar AU, which is the same thing as delta mu 
AU equals, hmm, I guess that's about negative 14,500 joules per mole. Okay? If we read off the intercept on the other side, we have to know what this curve is for. It turns out that it's for silver gold. So that means that this side is pure gold, this side is pure silver, so that here at XAU equals 0.4, delta mu AG equals uh, about negative 7,500. Okay, so from the curve of delta G mixing, we can find these values of delta mu. So we've seen how to find delta mu from a plot of delta G of mixing. If we have a plot of G of solution, it turns out that we could do the math and, and prove to ourselves that that will give us just the chemical potential. So let's take a look at that. So this is a plot of G solution, and this is also for the same silver gold alloy. And so if we draw the tangent to the curve at some point on this plot, then we can find the intercepts, which will just give us mu. So in this case, the intercepts give mu of x. All right, so at x a u equals 0.4, we can find on this side mu a g and just read it off of there directly. So it's um, just about, let's see, negative 7,900, 79,500 joules per mole. And down here, this value is mu a u, and we find that to be, I guess, maybe negative 91,000 or so joules per mole. Okay, so the important point here is that if we have a plot of um, the mixing property, either delta B of mixing or B of solution, to use the general terms, we can draw the tangent to the curve at the composition we're interested in and read off the partial molar properties from the intercepts. I've shown this example here for G of mixing or G of solution but we could equally do this with volume. So let's just take a quick look at that. So this is a plot of delta V of mixing. So let's say that we wanted to find, if we're reading off the intercepts here, that's gonna give us delta V bar, and we'll just do this for ethanol. So let's say that we're at uh, X equals 0.6. So we come up here to the curve we draw this line, and so we would find that delta V bar ethanol is negative 0.6 milliliters per mole. So our units are whatever they are on the y-axis. And so we can just remember that change in partial molar volume is the partial molar volume in the solution minus the partial molar volume in the pure state. And so we can just write that like that. So as long as you know the molar volume, then if you find the change in the partial molar volume, you can easily go to the partial molar volume. Likewise, if we had the volume of solution instead of the um, delta V of mixing, we could equally apply the same sort of idea here. So let's say that we're interested in x equals 0.8. Come up here, draw our tangent to the curve. And because this is V of solution, 
this intercept directly gives the partial molar volume, in this case of silicon, and so we can read this off, and it's about 8.8 .8. 8 centimeters cubed per mole. So that's how we uh, put to use the equation for finding partial molar properties from mixing properties.